So I just want to follow up, uh, Stevie, with you about your story. You know what? One of the ironies of all of this is in you taking a stand for freedom of speech, for what you believe, you are actually taking a stand for all of those other students who are threatening and opposing you. Because mm -hmm. in standing for freedom of speech and free, you know, the rights of conscience, you were advocating for them even as they were attacking you. And that's why when I talk about, when I think about virtue, that's, the, that's virtue, right? That's not acting like you're virtuous. That's actually being virtuous. And so I just mm -hmm. want to commend you for that. Um, that. That's just such an incredible story. And I think it's something that will inspire not just young adults your age, but, you know, folks like us, you know, and, and, and others to remember that um, all of us can do something. We can't do everything, but all of us can do something. And it something as simple as standing, which is what you did, made a huge impact. And you saw it to graduation, all these other people who were silent. Yeah, good right? point. And they applauded you in the end. They were standing with you. Mm hmm. And so hopefully in the future, those same people will have been inspired by your courage and your integrity and your virtue and will do the same in some situation going forward. So I just wanted to emphasize that that was just an amazing story. Gloria, you're the founder and president of the United Women Foundation. It's a nonprofit that mentors and provides college scholarships to uh, conservative female students. And, I think that's fantastic. You you clearly have a passion for mentorship. You've very clearly mentored your sons very well. I mean, they uh, I haven't met your other son, but Stevie is just an incredible young man, um, incredible young man. So would love to hear more about United Women Foundation. Why did you feel there was a need to develop a scholarship fund and a mentorship program specifically for young conservative women? Well, when Stevie's incidents were going on at Belmont, a lot of young women came and started telling him what was happening in their lives. And there were a lot of similarities there. And so um, they started telling me their stories. And their stories are horrible. I mean, young women are targeted much more so by the radical left and the left than young men. Stevie happened to be in the line of fire. But young women are targeted because the left glamorizes being a Democrat and being a leftist. And, you know, you can have control of your own body and, you know, abortions are okay. It's you. It's not the baby. So they're trying very hard to get to our young female population. And unfortunately, the Republican Party doesn't do as well a job as they should with branding and marketing, in my opinion. And I wanted to do something to be able to help these young women who were in these situations where they had nowhere to turn. So I thought about it, and we started off as United Women of Tennessee originally because we were just doing Tennessee, and then we grew very quickly. And so they need a safe place where they can come to and talk to us and tell them what's going on with them and what is happening to them at work, at school, where or not. So United Women of Foundation was born from that. And we meet once a month on Zoom because we're, our membership is throughout the country. So we do meet once a month and we do conduct interviews. I mentor the young women on how to do an interview. I also help them with their resumes because they don't learn that in college. Nobody helps them with that. So I'll help them with a resume. I'll help them with getting internships. Two of my young women interned for a senator here in Tennessee this past summer. One of them is still there. And um, I also try to get them employed with conservative employers. And one of my young women went on to do, um, she's with a political strategist, and she did a very successful campaign recently. And I'm very proud of all of my young women, extremely. And it only takes one person to start a conversation. And that's what I did. And now I have so many women throughout the country and young women, especially that we're mentoring because we're all getting older and we need to look to the next generation to lead us. So we have to show them and provide them with the tools on how 
And I have an amazing board. They're extremely supportive and they're everywhere. And so we work together and we come together and we do whatever it takes because we're far from winning this fight. Conservatives need to stand together. And that's exactly why I started United Women Foundation. And the book proceeds, the net proceeds from the book Outcast do go to the foundation for scholarships for young women. And we do not base the scholarships on financial. We do not base it on if you are a straight A student. What we base it on is what are you doing as a conservative right now? And what will you continue to do throughout your life as a conservative? That is my main focus, conservatism. And that's everything that United Women Foundation stands for. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us. So when you buy the book, you're helping out this mentorship program and placing women on a new career track, getting them built up and supported. CV, speaking of these students and these conversations that you and your mom are having in this time, what words of advice would you have for students who are in a similar situation as you? They feel like they're outcast because of their values and their beliefs, or they may have even gotten some friction or been targeted or threatened, and they think that it's just better to shrink back, um, go undercover, uh, not speak up, and they're afraid of experiencing that kind of backlash. Having gone through this whole process now, what would you say to them on the other side of it? I think the most important thing is to remember to do what you think is right, not to bow down to people who are telling you what to think rather than how to think, which is a big problem we have in schools. I think secondly, uh, have a good group of supportive, pe supportive people. I was very fortunate that my parents and my family were always behind me. And I had some great friends at school who were always going to support me. And I think that it's, you know, I, I have the privilege now of serving as the Tennessee Young Republican Chair where I continue to hear of these stories happening at Belmont and schools throughout Tennessee and in every other state. And what we forget sometimes, you know, we're the silent majority by choice. We need to have more people speak out as to what is happening with them. And we need to highlight what they're doing to stand up and resist the pressures being put on them. And we've got to come together and, and, and cooperate and coordinate better so that people aren't going to be alone. Because I think that's the hardest part for young people is they want to fit in, they want to be accepted, uh, and they hate being the outcast. But we're not the outcasts because there's so many of us who have been attacked. Uh, we've just got to get together and work together if we want to see and be the change that we want to see in this country. So I would say that the most important thing is to remember that we are not alone. And however bad it gets, it will get better. Hmm. Just give time and remember that there are people that came before and will come after that will struggle with the same issues. And what you do now will determine how much easier fellow conservatives will have in the future or how much harder it will be for them hmm. if we stand up tall now. Yeah, I like that. You're you're breaking a trail. It makes me think of something you said earlier when you were like, I thought no one's going to remember this but me. Like, I have to look myself in the mirror every day. You know, fearlessness is formed in the fire. The only, the only way you can develop this is by going through it. And sofa sitters don't ever make a difference. If you're sitting there silent on the sofa, you're not actually blazing the trail for others. So those are really good words of wisdom. What are you up to now, Stevie? You're on the other side. You're a college graduate. You dress great. Uh, you talk well, you interview perfect. So what are your future aspirations? What are you thinking? Um, what trails are you blazing for other people now? Well, right now, like I said, I'm the Tennessee Young Republican Chair. So looking forward to getting a Republican back in the White House in 2024 and making sure that Tennessee stays a supermajority Republican state. Uh, a few months ago, myself and two partners uh, founded a business, a uh, security business. So we're looking at making sure that our schools stay safe and that we get armed officers to protect students in schools. Uh, but also I'm involved in Rotary and a few other organizations. Uh, just to give back, you know, I've been very fortunate that we live in Tennessee and that we've been given all the opportunities that we have here. And I love to give back and, and support the community that has supported me and molded me into who I am today.